Hi, good morning, and welcome to the Comics Experience Graphic Novel of the Month Club uh, for the month of June. It's June. I can always, it, the weird thing about this virus is how I lose track of time and what day it is. Um, uh, our book this month is, is, is such a good book. This is such a special book. It's Superman Smashes the Clan by uh, Gene Yang and Guru Hiro. Uh, and we are uh, very lucky to have um, both Gene Yang here, uh, here in California, but from home. And, uh, and we have Naoko Kawano from Guru Hiro. Um, the other member of Guru Hiro is sick today, so is, was not able to make it. So we're all wishing her absolutely the best and, and that she, uh, she recovers quickly. Uh, but we're very happy to welcome uh, uh, Kawano from Japan. Uh, where it's one o'clock in the morning over there, so thank you so much for staying up. Thank you for having us. Thank you. I think Sasaki and Kuano are um, uh, among the the most elite cartoonists working in in the world of comics. The, I mean, I, I just think their their work is absolutely stellar. And when I um, began talking with DC Comics about doing Superman Smash as a clan, they were at the very top of the list. I, I said, this would be my dream team. I did not think we would be able to get them because I, I know they're in really high demand. Um, but uh, but I'm so glad. Th so thank you, Kuano. Thank you so much for saying yes. They're very, one of the very few creative people who are in Japan who are working on American comics. Um, what would what would she say is the difference uh, from her point of view between American comics and Japanese comics? Uh, so uh, what she thinks is that uh, basically manga Japanese comics are made by one author. Of course, there are exceptions, but, but uh, for American comics, she thinks that uh, you know, the, the, the people that works on one title is pretty much divided into a uh, smaller portion of the work. Like there's an editor and then the writer and then penciler and color, uh, colorist and a letter, which she thinks is that of course, gives a lot of uh, uh, wide variety of expressions, mm. and also with having a lot of people in one title, she thinks that there may be a lot of uh, perspectives that makes it uh, more, you know, uh, like, like she said earlier, uh, there will be a diversity in Superman obviously is a very American character. He he's represents America in many ways. Um, is it hard for them to approach, or is it easy for them to approach uh, drawing Superman um, uh, uh, given the cultural differences? あんまり感じたことないんですよね。えっと、スーパーマンって言うとやっぱりこっちでよく昔クルースティムさんの書かれあの階段アニメーションのスーパーマンのイメージがすごく強くて、他回もその影響がすごく出てると思うんですけども、
to to tell this story that's rooted in the 1940s that kind of like there, there's something to that right like um when the original storyline aired many japanese american families were still in the internment camps uh, yeah. and there was still really intense anti-japanese feeling in, in in america right uh and and that was a, a sin that we had to deal with uh as as a nation so um so the the fact that i got to team up with guri hero to tell the story i do feel like is um is at least a small sign of some sort of progress yeah no and i i also i think it really shows just how important art is to to transforming culture right i mean i i i, I yeah. have to think that some kids are going to read this book and and these lessons are going to live with them for the rest of their lives you know and and that's the power yeah. of of yeah. of storytelling and stories um so so yeah this is great stuff what are the particular challenges opportunities associated with adapting a script and how much flexibility did you allow well, yourself to deviate from the story those two questions yeah yeah so so first is we did want to keep the the like the bones of the original story you know we wanted to keep the main characters we wanted to be recognizable as an adaptation of that original story um i guess one of the challenges and adapt and, and opportunities that came up was at the center of the story was a chinese american family you know um and that was intriguing but i was also kind of confused by it because um I, I just don't think like when you think about the clan i i don't think asian americans are the first group that you think of as as their enemies right, right. so i i wanted to figure out why i wanted to figure out why there was a chinese american family at the center of the story in 1946 um and i knew nothing about the history of the clan um uh, and its relationship with Asian Americans. So I, I did a bunch of research and what I discovered was really interesting. You know, so the, the African Americans are obviously the, uh, the clan's first and, and, um, uh, and primary targets. You know, the clan was formed immediately after the civil war because they were just freaked out that African Americans would demand, you know, equal rights and equal treatment and, and to be like seen as human beings. That's what they were freaked out about. Yep. But pretty soon after that, and this is something I didn't know because I never learned this in, in my history class. Within three years, um, a West Coast clan was founded. And back then, there just weren't a lot of African Americans on the West Coast. So the clan on the West Coast, their primary targets were Chinese immigrants. And they took the costume and all the all the methods, all the terrorist methods from the clan of the South, and they just applied it to these Chinese immigrant populations, you know, so um, I, I think Chinese Americans, Asian Americans in general, we uh, have historically not been politically active and i think that is a mistake i think when you when you look at the history um what happens is anti-black racism often inspires and informs anti-asian racism so for asians to sit on the sidelines during black lives matter it's just it's disrespectful of our own history i don't think i would have known that had i not done this book